Aloha mai kako, everyone. Welcome to a special episode of the Moana Nui podcast. My name is Moana, and I'm the founder and host of the show. I'm also a children's book author for the Adventures of Nakoa and Nohea children's book series and an editor for the Wildcard Chronicles comic book here at Burning Spear Comics. Today, I'm really excited because we are starting a special series that we are having in sponsorship with Papa Ololokahi, which is the premier organization in Hawaii uplifting Native Hawaiian health and well being. And as part of this series, we are featuring our Papa Ololokahi continental partners across the United States and helping our community understand what organizations are out there what their mission is, how they're serving the community, and most importantly, how you can connect and leverage their services. So today I am joined by the leadership team from a Hawaiian cultural center located here in Washington, DC. They have a mission to preserve and perpetuate Hawaiian culture by educating, engaging, and connecting with communities near and far. They ALA continues to provide cultural workshops, demonstrations, concerts, fashion shows, and so much more to uplift the well-being for families in the DC area. And I'm excited to bring them on. So first we'll start off with some introductions and I'll bring our wonderful Vahine up into the front to join me here in the studio. So first we have Anti Kuule Stockman. She is a graduate of the Kamehameha Schools for Girls in Honolulu with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Education from Ablion College in Michigan. Antikuule spent most of her career in the group incentive travel business. She later joined Honolulu Pacific Center for Economic Development as its Director of Native Hawaiian Culture Resources in its DC office. Years later, she had an opportunity to work at the Office of Hawaiian Affairs in DC and Kuule is now with Nakupuna Companies in Arlington, Virginia, a Native Hawaiian organization, NHO owned family of companies headquartered in Honolulu, comprising 8A small disadvantaged businesses. Kuule founded three 501c3 nonprofit Native Hawaiian cultural organizations here in the DC area. She's currently on the Alexandria, Virginia based board of ALA Hawaiian Cultural Center. She's also served two terms as president of the Hawaii State Society of Washington, D.C., was formerly first vice president of Kelly Makainana Hawaiian Civic Club of Washington, D.C., and is now a member of both Kamehameha Schools East Coast Alumni Association and the Hawaii State Society. So let's welcome Antiku to the show. Aloha, Anti. Aloha and mahalo. Uh, of course. Secondly, we have Miss Lehua Villanueva Stewart. Stewart, sorry, sis. Aku Ao Maui Native is the CEO at ALA Hawaiian Cultural Center, a Native Hawaiian cultural organization, as I mentioned, with the mission to preserve and perpetuate Hawaiian culture by educating and engaging and connecting with our community. Lehua is pursuing a doctorate of philosophy in Hawaiian and Indigenous language and cultural revitalization from the University of Hawaii at Hilo. Kahaka Ula Oke, sorry guys, I never practice. Ke'e Likolani College of Hawaiian Language. She holds a master's degree in education, curriculum studies, and STEM with social science and a sense of place from the University of Hawaii at Manoa and a bachelor's degree in organizational management from North Park University in Chicago. She enjoys providing educational opportunities to showcase the vibrancy of Native Hawaiian people. Lehua served as the president of the Kamehameha Schools Alumni Association East Coast Region and is a longtime member of the Hawaii State Society of Washington, D.C. Her ohana lives in Maryland, where they, three of their children are kumu, or teachers, at Hawaiian Cultural Center. So let's welcome Tita Lehua to the show. Aloha, sis. <laughs> and last but certainly not least is Marilyn Fariet. She was born in San Antonio, Texas. She's lived in various parts of the continent due to her father's service in the Air Force. And she also lived in Wahiwa, where her dad was before moving to Maryland. 
Marilyn and her husband, Ikaita, have four kids. Onalani is a recent graduate of the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, who majored in computer science and now works for the Department of Defense. Moani is a cadet at the U.S. Coast Guard Academy. Pono and Kaihile are currently in high school. And Onalani is one of the kumu here at AIA Cultural Center. Marilyn also serves as a director of operations, where she works side by side with Lehua and Antikule on planning educational and co cultural events here at ALA. She also volunteers as the, the unit adjutant, I hope I said that right, at the Young Marines. Marilyn is passionate about volunteering and creating positive change in her community. At the top of her list is spending time with and enjoying her ohana as well as appreciating the arts. So with that said, let us bring Sis Marilyn to the show as well. Aloha, Marilyn. Aloha. Awesome. Wow, you guys, we have known each other for many years now, but it's funny like how until you look at the bio and you see all the different accomplishments, like, oh, we get some smart mana bahini on this panel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm just, I'm excited to get to talk to you guys a bit more about the work that you're doing with Eala A and also hear your perspectives on the community here in the DC area and what are the, like the things where we have been successful and areas where we could still, you know, continue to evolve and bring more services and opportunities to connect here in our community. But before we get into all of that, we love to start our shows with our guests sharing a little bit about their Pico. And fortunately today, I don't have to explain to you guys what that means. <laughs> For some of our guests, we do. But tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what school you were in grad, and something special about your home place. So Auntie Koo, you want to start us off? Sure, why not? Since my name is Enti, that means I'm Kupuna, so thank you so much for honoring the fact that I should go first. <laughs> I am born and raised in Aeaho, in Aea, on the island of Oahu. I went to Kamehameha School for Girls, and the one thing that stands out to this day, to this Kupuna aged day, is that when I was I wanted to major in French, first of all, I wanted to be a French teacher. And when mm -hmm. I went to my counselor and said, I want to take French and I also want to learn my native tongue. Mm -hmm. And she said, you must choose between two foreign languages. And I was so taken aback because I never considered my native tongue a foreign language. But because I wanted to be a French teacher, I chose French. And that didn't sit well with me for years, but that's what I wanted to be. Many years later in Maryland, I'm sitting at a backyard luau with some of my friends. And they're ch we're talking about Hawaii. You know us, when we just break into pidgin, yeah? So we're talking about Hawaii using pidgin, some Hawaiian words. And one of my girlfriend's kids came up and said, Auntie Kule, what does pal cow cow mean? I said, what? She said, what does pow cow cow mean? And for those of you that are listening that don't know, po co co means I'm finished eating. And of course I blew a gasket and then all of a sudden I knew I had a purpose. I didn't know what they were or what it or they were, but I knew I had to do something because I am native Hawaiian. Years later, very quickly we co-founded Hello Olani, which is a thriving hello in Arlington, Virginia. They do excellent work. We just enjoyed their Ho'olalea the other week. That's in Arlington. And then as a result of a continuing need, Hello Nohona Hawaii was co-founded. Lua is one of the co-founders in Silver Spring, Maryland. And then more, we needed some more Yalehua. The last thing we co-founded is Yalea Hawaiian Cultural Center. And we can discuss later of the different things that we do. But th that's pretty much what it is. The, the special thing about having been born and raised in Hawaii was being surrounded with a culture that is so giving, so forgiving. But the most important thing, kako, being all inclusive. And that's, I think, 
what I, I have carried from it when I was a child. So I'm Paul. That's it. That's what I have to share with you guys. Okay. Awesome, Auntie. I never heard the story about you being a French teacher. So how interesting, mm -hmm. but I'm so glad that you embraced the Olelo Hawaii here especially for our, our Kanaka living on the continent who maybe didn't have the privilege of being immersed in our culture and getting ma to that. So mahalo nui for that. My pleasure. Okay, lihua. Hui. I love, Auntie, that you put in there that you studied French because that's exactly what I started at Kamehameha schools is French as well because I met a Tahitian crew of OC paddlers, like outrigger canoe paddlers when I went to state races. And as a youth, and I said to myself, oh, I got to study that language. <laughs> and the only thing they had at the time was French. So I never take Tahitian. I took French instead of Olelo Hawaii. So I too know a little bit about some French and this. So that's mm -hmm. one great thing that we have in common. Aloha. My name is Lehua Stewart. I'm from Ku'au Maui. For those of you that no don't know where that's at, it's like on your way to Hana. So it's on the northern part of the Maui Island. So born and raised there, went to Paia Elementary, Kalama Intermediate, a little bit of Maui High School, played varsity volleyball. My freshman year was awesome. Then my mom decided to move to Oahu, finished out my freshman year at Campbell High School, and then got into Kamehameha School my sophomore year, and then graduated from Kamehameha. Right after that, went straight into the University of Hawaii at Manoa, got married, got shipped out in 98 to Chicago, Illinois, where I finished my bachelor's degree, popped out three kids. <laughs> then we got moved again, military to Maryland. And then while I'm here, got my master's in education, of course, had journeyed with Antikuule, so not only Am I a part of this beautiful organization? I also am a teacher at Mead High School. I'm learning to become and create content for ALA Hawaiian Cultural Center. That's STEM focus. I graduated with my master's degree from the University of Hawaii at Manoa with a degree in STEM squared, which is STEM plus social science and sense of place. And so my goal is to create, to learn how to teach ninth through 12th grade, as well as to create curriculum for our Indigenous youth who need more encouragement, more, uh, a better opportunity to be successful and be more confident in the STEM field. So that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm going into my second year in teaching at Mead High School, but I also am a volleyball coach <laughs> at Mead High School. And I also founded a club at Mead High School to perpetuate, again, the cultures. There is the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander club that I created within Mead High School. So hoping to share about all the different cultures and learn more about that while at Mead as well. So trying to make a larger dent and a footprint to help in that sense as well. So that's a little bit about me. <laughs> that's amazing. I knew some of that stuff, but I'm really excited to see how you're applying the degrees that I know you are so passionate about and working hard for. <laughs> over the past couple of years and seeing how you can make an impact here in, in the mm -hmm. DC area, whether it's Kanaka Keiki or Keiki from other disadvantaged and marginalized communities, our African-American Keiki or Latina Keiki, all, all of those who have very similar challenges to, to our community. So mahalo for that and excited mm -hmm. to see what you do and how we can help support you in that work, mahalo. Mm -hmm. Marilyn, how about you? So I was born in San Antonio, Texas. My father was in the Air Force, so I guess I didn't really have a hometown in the beginning. We traveled all over. My background is my mother, she's Korean Chinese, and my dad is Mexican, Spanish, Native American, and French. So I never had a sense of place in the different families because I guess having a mixed background. So when my dad moved to Hawaii and he got stationed in <coughs> I, it felt a little bit like home to me because there was people that were diverse backgrounds. Going to lunch, they were packing bento boxes and that was okay. Having kimchi and rice, I was so excited. <laughs> so that always felt very special to me. So then my father moved to, got stationed here in Maryland. And then I guess this became my hometown. 
and I met my husband Ikaika here at, in high school and graduated here and then we got married early and I guess we got the family started early. We had four kids and my passion has been raising them and giving them a sense of their heritage has been pretty important to me since I didn't have that opportunity. So that's something that I've been really passionate about for the kids. And so I'm super thankful to Auntie Ku for starting Halal Oalani because honestly, I give a lot of thanks to her because if it wasn't for her, our kids wouldn't have that culture being here. And it's nice that when they go back home, they feel a part of the community. They have the sense of self and they don't feel like maybe they're missing something, a part of them. So I'm really thankful to Auntie and her family's thankful. And I'm just happy for all the opportunities. And then also I have a big passion for volunteering and giving back. And I've known Lehua for so long and our kids have grown up together and we have a lot in common. And I like to bounce off of her because she's like the big sister. So I'm really honored for being around both of them, being mentored and just thankful for all of the things that they've created for my children and for the community around this in the area. Mahalo. It's so beautiful to have, regardless of the size of the community, wherever we are, but just to have those who we can lean on and navigate life with because there's lots of challenges just as a person but as a kanaka there's a whole lot more challenges coming here from our culture right like when i came here i was like oh my god uh, <laughs> what's up with these people uh, <laughs> it's so polar opposite of hawaii but i love that we get to share our kuleana and our culture from where we are and just make impacts where we can and help people appreciate and understand a little bit more about what it means to be Kanaka and what it means to share Hawaii as our pico and our homeland. Awesome. You guys know, I love you guys, Ohana. It's exciting to hear more about your backstory and how you guys have worked together over the years. And even to see your kiki now grow into Kumu for the Culture Center is fantastic. Let's talk a little bit more about Iala A as an organization. But before we do that, I want to share a brief video from our sponsor, Papa Ololokahi. And we'll hear from Sherry Daniels, who is our executive director, and the wonderful lady who is helping us to connect, deepen our relationship and our support to the community. Namakava is a program that builds on the strengths within communities as we plan our recovery from the pandemic. The American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA, of 2021 has designated 20 million to be specifically devoted to Native Hawaiian health, which Papololokahi has been tasked to distribute among a multitude of established organizations that provide various services throughout Hawaii. We call this program Namakavai. The Namakavai program's two-year funding will be used to increase vaccine capacity, improve COVID-19 response and treatment capacity, increase capacity for accessible and available healthcare services, and deliver health education and services during the ongoing recovery and stabilization phases. These ARPA funds will be invested into 20 organizations on five islands that already have a track record in providing services that uplift Kanaka well-being. Native Hawaiians have suffered greatly from infections and death due to COVID-19. Mental health needs have risen in the Lahui. The pandemic in Hawaii has widened the gaps in access, affordability, and availability to health care. And of course, highlighted the social and economic disparities already experienced by Native Hawaiians. Papa Ololokahi looks forward to highlighting the good work that these partners are doing to build the capacities and amplify the health and well-being in their communities. We'll be providing regular community updates and a formal report to the community at the end of each year. Mahalo to Sherry and Papa Ola Lokahi for bringing us into the circle and allowing us, our continental partners, to be a part of their overarching strategy, especially as the recent surveys have shown that there are more Kanaka now living on the continent than being at home. For this year, I really wanted to think more about how we can service the unique needs of the Kanaka on the continent, right? Without having the connection to Aina, which is tough, right? Because a lot of our culture is based in that. But before we get into that, let's talk more about Eala A, your mission and the services that you offer and a little bit about what you guys have done so far. We're humbly founded in 2017, which is not so long ago. 
And so in doing so, of course, as you mentioned earlier, the mission is to perpetuate and preserve the Native Hawaiian culture by through education, through connections that we create, as well as through engagement, like what kinds of engaging content can we do to bring folks together? And so over the years, we've done anything and everything from cooking, like lao, to as grand as holoku balls. We're always open for suggestions and opportunities to partner, connect, and make a better impact. We do have a community impact page on our website <clears throat> that showcases the things that we've done over our 27 since 2017. And, and of course, we have our newsletters that we share with what we do with the community. So not only do we have our own events, but we uplift other events that are happening in the area, not even only in the area, but what's happening on the continent, what's happening back home in Hawaii, resources that are available virtually, resources that are available if you step into a space and take advantage of it. Very thankful for the folks who are the Hanalima, the hands-on work that we do to send out these messages are very important because without that opportunity to do that, then a lot of the folks who we want to impact and help wouldn't know. So very thankful for Marilyn for sharing out for Antiku for creating content. And of course, like you mentioned earlier, Kumu who who helped to teach the folks who are here and of course who are away. So yeah, we've been doing a good amount of things. I know Auntie Koo and Marilyn could probably jump in and add more. The Hawaiian Cultural Center, it's a Ho'ohana program. And what we try and do is we try and hit the four different age groups so that we encompass from Keiki all the way up to Kupuna. So we have four programs that are that recur every year. The first would first part of the year, like first quarter, we have an Aha Keiki day, if you will, and pretty much Lehua handles that. Pre-COVID, we did that in person. During COVID, we started to do it Zoom, but didn't get too many participants, so we let it go. And then now we're back. We're going to start that up in the first quarter of 2024, and Lehua is the leader of that program with the Kumu from LA. But we teach them what keiki are capable of learning, which would be arts and crafts, a little bit of olelo, some hula, mo olelo. We, we, and this year, we are hoping to have you, Moana, read some of your books, but share them with the, the keiki. The second thing out of the four is that we do another program called Aho Opio. So it's an exciting program for us event that we have every year. We've had a lot of great speakers that come and partnerships like with Nestle, Antiku, but it's for the college students around the area and it brings them together. It helps them get information, education for things like, what do I do after I graduate? Are there opportunities here in the area? And how can I meet and make other partnerships and relationships with other Native Hawaiians in the area? Our first topic was Okay, I graduated now. And we thought, oh, that's really good because really people, kids don't really understand what to do, what the life is like after you fall with college. We've done this for two years. And oddly enough, the next topic of discussion, we're hoping to have a OPO in September when the kids all come back to school. They asked if we could do a topic on health mental health, emotional health. And when we asked, when we tried to dig a little bit deeper, we found that being from Hawaii, whether you're native, whatever, whether you're Kanaka Maoli or Japanese or any other race, when they come to the continent, it is a totally different ball game for these kids, especially when they come to the East Coast. Oh my goodness, you gotta learn how to swim with sharks. Yeah. For sure. So it, it affects it, it affects everybody mentally and emotionally. And I'll give you an example. The other a couple of weeks ago, I was in a meeting at, at the office, and one of the <clears throat> attendees, his back was to me. And as I was going around saying hi to everybody, I just touched his shoulder and brushed the back of his back. And then, oh my God, that night I couldn't sleep because us, not Native Hawaiians only, people from Hawaii, we so touchy feely, kissy huggy. Huh? And I lost sleep because I thought, 
did I touch him? What was it incorrect? So stuff like that. So that's some of the struggles that some kids have in, when they come to this, to the East Coast. How do I continue to honor my values, practice my values, live the life that I was born and raised to live when I'm in a totally different environment that has almost nothing to do with how I was born and raised? So that's why the next OPO session for the kids at the Hawaii Club, the American University, Georgetown, and George Washington, that's why our next focus is going to be on health. And this is, it's so perfect because Papa Olalo Kahi just sort of came together at the same time, yeah? And then they, then we will have a, what we call Papa Olalo Leo, which is going to be a, a family cultural day, Koko, arts and crafts, games, hula, ukulele, everything. And all three of us are working on that. And then the last is very dear to my heart, only because I'm kupuna, and it's to honor our hulu kupuna. And it's a, it's a ball. It's a gala night on November 4. And we are going to honor our kupuna by featuring them, by honoring them. And we're going out, we're looking for sponsors and stuff like that. Those are the four things. This was the who was brainstormed to come up with something that goes from A to Z, or I call it womb to tomb, in this case, KP to kupuna, and use that theme every year and present different ways of sharing our culture. So that's where we are. That's ALA. We are not a halal. We have enough halal already. Our idea is to bring the entire community, whether it's a halal or organization or alumni club, to be kako, to be together, come together. Mahalo. I love how you guys address all aspects of the Ohana because it's all interconnected and in that way. And I'm excited for all of the things that you guys are doing. Of course, I would love to come and talk to our Kiki and just focus on our young generation, right? Because those are the minds that we need to help shape and influence mm -hmm. in a positive way and just strengthen them and have them be firmly rooted in their culture because identity is so important to our health, our mental health, and understanding that even though it's not a lot of us, what we bring to the table is very powerful. As we mentioned earlier and in the bios, across the leadership team, there's many years of experience working in the Kanaka Maoli community here in the D.C. area, whether it's A, Hawaii State Society, mm -hmm. alumni, the Civic Club. From your perspective and the work that you guys have done thus far, what are the top needs, challenges, and gaps for our community that we here specifically here in the D.C. region that you guys have observed? Oh, Auntie, you first. You've been here longer. Well, I'll, just, I'll go last. <laughs> <laughs> we are certainly blessed being from Hawaii because everybody loves Hawaiian culture. Everybody loves Hawaii. Everyone wants to go to Hawaii which is part of the problem that we mm -hmm. have here. It is not coconut bra, it is not dress skirt. It's so much deeper. But if you combine the aloha, the love of the culture that exists in the community, that's a good start. What has to happen after that is that those who have kuleana, those who have responsibility, such as you, Moana, <laughs> and the three of us are LA, it is to, as Lehua has said before, to bring awareness to our communities because we don't have a lot of Native Hawaiians here. As a matter of fact, we have only a little bit, but the greater community has an incredible love to learn more about the culture and to learn in pure form, so to speak. And I think, I feel, I know that is taking that kuleana and doing everything we can to teach the different generations, in particular the keiki, the true meaning of Hawaiian values, of in particular ohana, hako, kuleana. And this is why poor Marilyn and Lehua, oh my goodness, their children, since they were knee high, no, you're going e ala e, and you're going to dance hula and you're going to share the culture with your friends but mom i want to go moody no this is your kuleana and it has been like that forever i cannot say that their children 
were upset with it because now that they're grown, you can see that it's in their spirit. It is by in their heart. Marilyn, I you did a superb job of raising the kids. You even did a better job of making sure that everybody else in your family went with the program. Your mothers, your fathers, your husbands, especially. The challenge here with this is people don't live the culture on in Washington, D.C. They'll come to a concert that we throw or host or they'll come to the whole the ball. They'll have a fabulous time. And then they go home and the culture doesn't exist anymore. It only exists in the environment that we provide or the Hawaii State Society provides or something like that. That is our biggest challenge. So I think we're doing the right thing by just trying to hit every level of every age level by appealing to all the age levels. And I think we do a pretty good job. All good things, Auntie has hit the nail on the head. It, it is a big challenge. In addition to that, here recently, because generationally it's changed. I remember being a late greeter myself at the airport back home in Hawaii, where the cellophane skirts and the coconut bras were so in the now. However, now that we're here on the East Coast, of course, that's historically, that's been what we've seen. We see the community request are those types of engagements for birthday parties, for you to bring the colorful luau skirts and the luau decorations and everything you can get from oriental trading or anything you can get from yeah. those places that, that sell that kind of stuff. However, what is beautiful is that, especially this year, for some interesting reason, I've been approached by a lot of partners who are looking to deliver Hawaii or learn more about Hawaii beyond the grass skirts, right? Beyond just hula. For example, being invited to Loudoun County in yeah. Virginia to yeah. learn more about Kamehameha the Great. I'm like, wow, that invitation specific. I did not have to prompt that area to offer that as a subject matter. They came to us and asked for that. So that is interesting for someone from Virginia also, Virginia Beach, to come Kamehameha graduate. They want to educate the community in the area on Kanaka education, whether it be Olelo Hawaii, whether it be history or, or just Mo'olelo. And then of course, our other partners, like for example, and Marilyn can speak to this as well, from congressional schools, for them to have chosen a specifically for the type of content that we deliver. It's not just grass skirts, hula, Tahitian, it is something deeper. And that is what I'm loving that's occurring right now. A lot of folks are looking for a different view of Kanaka. And that is what, I don't, we don't have to prompt those individuals. They are literally having these moments of, hey, you know what, let's find something else. Let's go a little deeper than the surface. And I love that it is something that's being asked for and it's something that we can provide an offer. So that is a challenge, but a good one, <laughs> a good challenge. Yeah, challenge slash opportunity. <laughs> about you, Marilyn, what is your perspective on this? So I wanna talk in the perspective of my children since I'm not native Hawaiian, but like for them going to school, it's they have to deal with, oh, you're not native Hawaiian because you weren't born there. I was born there, so that makes me Native Hawaiian. So they have to deal with things like that or deal with, oh, does your family live in grass huts? So things like that. So it's nice that what I'm happy about is being with the LA Hawaiian Cultural Center and with the upbringing that the different organizations that Antiku and Lehua have provided. It's given them the tools to answer those questions and address them instead of just not saying anything. Like our daughter, for instance, for their senior thing, it was alua, right? And so she found that, so she was asking questions, what, what does alua mean to you? What's my culture? I want my culture to be represented well. She spoke with the heads and then talked to them and then they changed everything. So it's nice that I feel like being a part of these organizations, it's taught our children what their culture's about and then going home and being with family, what does it look like? And then also the practitioners that Ayala A brings like Kumukuleo Trinidad and Kumukioni Nunes and all the different people, they've been really blessed to meet. 
So it gives them that background of what to, how to address those things and to be proud in their culture and how to make change in the community. And that's something that they're pretty proud about. But I do think that for us, it's, I feel really lucky to be part of ALA because to me, it's really hard to see any other place where you'd have the opportunity to like sit down and have a conversation with Kumu Kioni Nunes and just talk about things and get his perspective and get his background and his thoughts. So I think it's not something that everybody has access to or has the opportunity to do. So I think that, especially over here on the East Coast, and I do hear a lot of younger people that our kids talk to. They're like, I feel so disconnected being over here. I don't have that background. I don't, it, when I go home, I still feel disconnected. So I think if we could, all of us maybe have practitioners come out here more or masters come out here and meet with the community and talk to them and teach them even the basics of Hawaiian values, like with our husband, he's, they got to get up early and they got to, they have to clean up and you're the first ones to arrive. You're the last ones to leave. You have to help your kupuna, you have to help your community. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the simple things to all the way to more advanced topics that I think maybe it'd be nice for the community as a whole to have access to. Yeah, that, that's you guys, that, that hit on so many different topics, especially those feeling of disconnectedness and that weird one where you don't feel connected here, but then you also don't feel connected at home. And I think that's going to be an increasing challenge, right? As more Kanaka move to the continent. And so, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how we can work together too on helping to bring more practitioners to the area. I'm excited because I think Papa Ola Lokahi, the partnership that we have now will help to enable more of that to happen and we can continue to grow that for our community. And to hear the Keiki, their perspective too on the things that they encounter at school, what does it mean to be Native Hawaiian? That just sparked an idea for me because that's the topic I wanted to talk about on a panel, but I would love to get the OPO perspective too. Maybe we can partner on something like that to help them have a broader discussion with other keiki. Maybe we can get some keiki like in different regions of the country and have them talk story about that and how they deal with that from a mental health perspective too. You guys have done a lot of work here with Eala A. What has been the most successful event or activity and why? And also For me, since we since our inception, I think they're all successful. But the one that touches my heart most, of course, is the whole kupuna in honor of our kupuna. <laughs> but what that event did, it brought a community together that we have never seen brought together before. Mm. Uncle Kanani Kotner came to us and said, eh, I've been here a long time, eh? This wall was the most one with the most aloha. I never felt this kind of aloha before. And we were so touched because Uncle Kalani, Kalani or Kanani? Ka Kalani, Kalani, I'm sorry. Uncle Kalani is a, oh, he's a leader of the community and he's been here a long time. And for him to have honored us with that mana'o, that the phrase that he shared with us, we knew. We looked at each other and said, eh, we did good. We patted ourselves on the back. But the idea was to honor our community to bring them together. And I think this is the first time, Lihu, I think we felt that we brought the community. We brought different halal. We brought different alumni associations. We brought Dr. Sherry Daniels came from Papa Ololokahi. She supported, uh, Papa Ololokahi supported us. We had uncle from Kaya. Kaya is an NHO, Native Hawaiian owned company out in Oregon or state of Washington, came in because they saw the value of bringing a community together. And I think that was the greatest, that was my greatest, our greatest success, in my opinion. The second thing was, I've been in this community since the 70s, late 70s. We have never been able to touch two groups, two age groups. First is Keiki, and I think we have already talked about that. The second was those kids that come from Hawaii, they come to the East Coast, they go to college and they feel so lost. They miss the food, they miss their family, they miss the weather, they miss 
their how they grew up. They miss that a lot. We have been trying, and I've been a member of the Hawaii State Society, Kamehameha alumni. We have been trying in different organizations to tap that group. The biggest reason from the college kids why they couldn't attend anything was I don't have a car and the Metro doesn't take me to volunteer to where your event is. That was the biggest. Nobody listened. It just got dropped. So finally, when we started ALA, we decided, okay, these are the four age groups we have to tap. But this OPO, man, this is the hardest. They're here to study. So it's not like they can come go into Lehua's house for Saturday and Sunday and call on to the music and stuff like that. They're here to study. So they're very difficult to a group. So the first thing we did, okay, everything that we do has to be metro accessible. Right, ladies? Done. Everything we do has to be affordable. Done. Everything we do has to be of major connection to the Hawaiian culture. Done. Now, Hawaii, <clears throat> LAA has a very tight relationship with the three Hawaii clubs from American, Georgetown, and George Washington. As a matter of fact, LAA is a sponsor of their luau. We go to it every year. We are so touched because a lot of these kids are not Native Hawaiians. They're from Hawaii. They have a love of their culture. And every year when they, you expect to go to a college, oh, good fun, just cacao and food and everything. They present the culture from the very, at the very beginning. And they talk about the importance of the Native Hawaiian culture, the values, the Hawaiian values, how they were raised with Hawaiian values. They honor Kamehameha and they important the royalty. They honor the language and they honor the culture by sharing hula and kaukau food with everybody. So the first year we went, I think Marilyn and I were, we were, we couldn't believe that they did this. We didn't even have anything to do. All we did was support them financially. We had no planning with their program or anything like that. And we just sat back and we were just in tears because we were so touched by what these kids did. And not necessarily because they were native Hawaiian. They were just born and raised in Hawaii. I think that's probably another one that, is, that really touches us. And that again is a recurring, annual recurring thing that, and we were continuing to build. Now these kids are going to start <clears throat> giving back to ELA by volunteering at some of our programs. We're going to, they're going to start volunteering at our Holy Kabbal, our, we're hoping that they, one of them will host this. We're working on that, but we have finally been able to grab that age level, help them, and in return, they help us. But the bottom line is, what percentage of us is kanakamoli? Not much. And we can't help it. It's not, it's because of economics that we all chose to come to the continent. And we've all been successful. Marilyn and Lehua have been able to raise their children in a wonderful environment. Combination of work or swimming with the sharks, if you will, and then their Hawaiian culture. I think we've made a connection with these kids and I think we made a difference in their lives. And they will always take the Hawaiian values and Hawaiian culture with them wherever they go, that is a crown of achievement for us. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that, Auntie. Mahalo for connecting with that community because I, I just, I can't help but reflect back to when I first moved out here. I didn't know anybody. I knew only one person. It was Lily Beth. Do you guys know her? Oh, yeah. But she yeah, she was friends with one of my friends in college. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm moving to D.C. I don't know anybody, but I'm open to this challenge. <laughs> but to, to know that the students now have communities that they can engage with right mm -hmm. away, the value of that, you cannot even put a number on that. Mm -hmm. But I just know it'll help them accelerate so much further because mm -hmm. a huge part of our cultural values is that community and having that support. Mahalo for that. Let me know if I can help with that too, because in some of my other work for my on career stuff, like I'm starting to move more into recruiting and trying to 
get the next generation prepared and help them see a place in public service and helping them to understand that there is a support network there too, so that they can embrace some of these opportunities that might seem like jumping in the water with the sharks. <laughs> Let's project a little bit forward in the future. When you come to your time to transition to the next realm, what is the legacy that you hope that you want to leave here for the world, for our community? Well, your mind's going. Why don't you go ahead? <laughs> it's going. That's the thing. It's going. Just quickly, trying to put that in a capsule, the legacy. I think the legacy for me is for that view of Kanaka to change. Uh, I think for me, that would be if I could leave something in this world, it would be that, like changing it from cellophane skirts and coconut bras to who we are as a people. We are vibrant, smart, and we are amazing. And if and we're beyond that. So I, I, I wish that people could see that and know that as the moniker of what Native Hawaiian or what Hawaiian is. So just to have everyone kind of level set and have that understanding, learn their history as it should be learned. <laughs> Receive the stories that our ancestors have left behind so that we all as one people can have a deeper appreciation for not just Native Hawaiian, but for indigenous cultures in general. So if I could see that before I leave this earth, this Aina, that would definitely be a success for me. I'll go real quick for me. That little kid, my girlfriend's daughter, who said, Auntie Kuule, what does cow 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 mean? My legacy would me would be for her to come up now that she's a mother of children to say, Auntie Kuule, my cakey cow cow cow. There you go. <laughs> That's mine. I love it. <laughs> I guess for me, it would be that every indigenous person or native Hawaiian would have the tools that they need and the opportunities that they need to talk to people or to me I would call them masters right masters or kupuna to and to learn and then take those things have a sense of self and then be armed with tools for change so for me I really think it's important for me that the younger generation the OPO and the keiki have the tools that they need to make change because that's something that I talk to our kids often about. Take all the lessons that you've learned, go out and be a humble leader, but also give back, make change. If you see there's something that, you know, needs to be corrected or something that the narrative maybe isn't correct, go out there and be that change. You don't have to sit on the sidelines. Even right now, maybe you're 20 years old, you can go out there, join the clubs, be the change and start or start clubs of your own. I'm always so excited about ALA. I love it so much. I love the mission. <laughs> I love everything about it and I'm super passionate about it. So it's just important to me that the kids have what they need, have the tools that they need, be the change in the world and just go out there and make a difference. Enabling with the tools, that's the biggest thing. No, no matter how big the job is, you gotta make sure you got the right tools. <laughs> It looks like we're coming towards the end, but we're going to do a fun speed round. Wiki, wiki, wiki. In ten, 10 seconds or less to answer each of these questions, and we'll go in the order Etiku, Lehua, and then Marilyn. So I think I have seven of them. And quick questions. First thing to pop at the top of your mind. Okay. First one favorite musician? Oh, go. Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond. Okay. <laughs> Tupac Shakur. Oh, wow. Well, I'm going to go Lauren Hill. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay. Favorite Kumuhula? Oh, oh one Panoke, my first. Kumukaleo Trinidad. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite song? I am, I said, by Neil Diamond. <laughs> Im Tongi, his father's song. Oh, yes. Way, way. He didn't sing it. He didn't like, he wasn't the original, but Im Tongi, when he sang that song, that song yeah. is 
Was it one? Right now, that's my song. Yeah. Man, I'm on the spot, so <laughs> I don't know titles, but um, right now I really like Christian music. Okay, favorite Hawaii comedian? Oh, I love Andy Bumatai. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's old Bumatai. school. <laughs> uh, rap Replinger, old school. Tamua. Say it again. Tamua. Tamua, okay. Oh, I never heard of those two. I gotta go do homework now. Okay, favorite food? Favorite food? Oh, lomi salmon. Oh, gotta be lomi salmon. Pa'i ai. Mm. Oh. Awesome. I'm hungry now. Most misunderstood thing about Hawaii? Most misunderstood thing about Hawaii is that because you're born and raised in Hawaii, it doesn't mean you are Hawaiian. Hawaiian mm. is the blood. That's it. It's a good one. We don't hate tourists. <laughs> I think that's misunderstood. It's just some of the folks that come to Hawaii are disrespectful. And of course, folks who live in Hawaii are disrespectful. But so, yeah, we don't hate. I know there's like a thing that everybody thinks that we hate folks who are tourists. And we don't. It's just depending on what you do, <laughs> how you act. <laughs> so... <laughs> Bear. For me, it would be it's more than sunshine, flowers, and beaches. You, the Native Hawaiian people are people of rich culture, just so much great history, and they've done so much. So it's there's so much to say. Awesome. Okay. So let talk about it a little bit. More tourism for Hawaii. I or Aole? Aole. Aole. Okay. <laughs> Unanimous decision. Okay, last one, fun one. Pineapple. I or Aole? I. Aole. With Lihi more. <laughs> Is that bad? <laughs> no, that actually sounds amazing right now. All right. <laughs> You guys did a good job. 10 seconds or less. Nice. All righty. Now that we're in at the end of the session, before we, we say goodbye, say ahui ho, I want to give you guys a chance to let people know where they can contact you, whether it be online. And this could be for the organization or for yourself. Auntie Kule. Actually, I was going to turn over to Marilyn because that's her area. Okay. I, mean, yeah. I was going to say luhu. <laughs> <laughs> But you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Even we have a YouTube, small little YouTube channel. So ALA Hawaiian Cultural Center or ALA HCC. Thank you guys so much. Mahalo Nui on behalf of the Moana Nui podcast, as well as Papa Ola Lokahi for being a part of our wonderful community partner network excited to see what you guys are going to do and how we can work together to build our ohana our lahui and help to break down a lot of these stereotypes that most people have experienced because unfortunately not everybody can afford to go to hawaii and really see what it's like for themselves so Thank you for being the walking bulletin board for our Kanaka. <laughs> and just really, truly, I laugh, but like truly sharing the magic of our culture and helping people to, I think, feel a little bit connected even more with their own self. A lot of people don't have culture. And so for us that do, it is a privilege in that way to be able to help them to understand that there's a deeper connection <clears throat> that can be had when you take the time to get to know other people and what they're all about. So... On behalf of Dana and myself, mahalo nui. To everybody who has tuned in today, mahalo. Please subscribe, share. Please follow Papa Ola Lokahi and the wonderful work that they're doing because what we talked about today is just a very small piece of the broader impact that they have in Hawaii and for the community. And then also check out the Moana Nui podcast where we stream live every Thursday evening. We have two shows every week. So lots of content for you guys to take part in there. Of course, we talk about Hawaiian topics, but we also have a leadership series, a mental health series, pop culture and nerd stuff. So like we're really trying to bring it all together because there are a lot of different ways that we can connect. And sometimes it, you just don't know what will be the connective tissue for the next friend or partner or peer that you come across with in life. So with that said, mahalo nui. 
Thank you guys so much. Take care. Malama Pono. Ahoy ho. Mahalo. So many stories left to tell Even if we have to ourselves Can't keep history on the shelf If they won't tell it, we will If this the land of the free, it was a freedom then When they annexed Hawaii and called it see the lands Without any type of payment and no signing off Called themselves the Republic in 1894 1.2 million acres overtaken from the native Hawaiians When they resisted, the West retaliated in violence and erasure The Hawaiian language is banned As part of colonialism's plan to expand, yeah Stuck between a rock and a hard place Multiple bombings of Kohola Bay As a part of their ongoing war with Asia Used it as a place for target practice No consent or compensation Colonizers call for annexation No work out for all the locals School will never let you know So many stories left to tell Even if we have to ourselves Can't keep history on the shelf If we won't tell it, we will Too many stories left to tell Even if we have to ourselves Can't keep history on the shelf If we won't tell it, we will We will So if we put Hawaii in a perspective Black and Asian history is interconnected Instead of in the fight with the Pacific Then of course versus Asia They was treated as a middleman for war But they didn't let the Western colorism run its course Cause dark skin was a sign of dignity to call The land was taken in the name of capitalism When prior to it was an actual kingdom Clap back at the system Stuck between a rock and a hard place Multiple bombings of Kohola Bay As a part of their ongoing war with Asia Used it as a place for target practice No consent or compensation Colonizers call for annexation no work out for all the locals, school will never let you know So many stories left to tell, even if we have to ourselves Can't keep history on the shelf, if we won't tell it, we will So many stories left to tell, even if we have to ourselves Can't keep history on the shelf, if we won't tell it, we will So many stories left to tell, even if we have to ourselves Can't keep history on the shelf, if if he won't tell it, we will Too many stories left to tell Even if we have to ourselves Can't keep history on the shelf If he won't tell it, we will We will